Uh, going on to the culture part of the podcast, you have Los Angeles ranked number one for organized theft, making it the winner of this award two years in a row, back to back. What a beautiful culture that is Los Angeles. I'm sure it'll be good next year. Like Chicago. Like the Bears. Because that's what they always say, the Bears will be good next year. Ha, <laughs> that's a joke because they don't win sports balls games. I'm told they have a very good defense. But just like the city of Chicago, seems like they have the definition of insanity and doing the same thing again, 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 and expecting different results. But yeah, not so much. So sports balls joke for you. Now, you also know that this is the this is thanks to KTLA. So it's a local news network over in Los Angeles. They noted for the fifth year in a row, Los Angeles has the distinction of being the number one in the city, number one city in the nation when it comes to organized retail theft. I thought it was just two years in a row. Number one? The annual report from the National Retail Federation surveyed 177 brands, found that the average shrink rate, which is the term in retail when the items are lost, stolen, or broken, and that climbed to 1.4% in 2021 to 1.6% in the U.S. last year. Oh, they actually even def define it for us. Shrink rate is an industry term for lost inventory. And it gets lost in a myriad of ways, both employee as well as individual or as well as organized theft. While it might not seem like a significant percent change, the trade group says that it represents an additional $18.2 billion in losses. And of course, the San Francisco Bay Area for the third straight year was they were second for the third straight year, and Sacramento at seventh. Interesting, it's almost as if the culture that elects politicians to pass laws isn't effective in California. Who would have thought? Oh, yes, yes. Anyone with a modicum of intelligence could have told you that by defelonizing the theft of items up to $950, turn them into misdemeanors, and the way the justice system is set up with plea agreements, and the way that district attorneys in California don't prosecute anything, that would make the situation infinitely worse. Though, perhaps, it's all intended to buy votes. Conspiracy theory, or fact, or reality, you decide. Now, the National Retail Federation went on to say, quote, retail theft, crime, and theft continue to impact the retail industry at unprecedented levels. These effects of these criminal acts are not isolated to large national brands or large metropolitan areas. Daily ma media reports show that no business is immune and these issues touch retailers of all segments, size, and locations in the United States, unquote. However, I don't think it pertains to one particular retail establishment. Gun stores. Go ahead and try to rob a gun store. It won't end well. And yeah, interestingly, do not bring that up in this article. But if you just look up a YouTube compilation of people robbing gun stores, I mean, I don't recommend it because it's obviously, well, depending on where you live or what your ideology are or what your background is, perhaps not, obviously. So I will just simply say it does not end well for the bad guy. Now, this also referenced a flash mob when it came to a Los Angeles mall establishment where Nordstrom used to have a store there. Now, thankfully, they have a modicum of intelligence, so they left that particular strip mall. And just in a couple hours, just 100,000 of inventory, gone. Because they had a mob literally just go to the store. And the only thing they had there to stop it was a futile attempted at a security guard who had pepper spray. Which, yeah, again, isn't going to stop anything. Now, they also go on to say, here are the top, and you might notice all these cities have something in common. The top 10 cities in metropolitan areas affected by organized retail crime in 2022. This according to the National Retail Federation. Number one, Los Angeles. Number two, San Francisco. Number three, Houston. Number four, New York. Number five, Seattle. Number six, Atlanta. Number seven, Sacramento. Number eight, Chicago. Number nine, Denver. Number 10, Miami. Number 11, Albuquerque. A majority of those cities have many things in common, politically speaking. Now they continue to say, and this is again from the National Retail Federation, quote, while theft has an undeniable impact on retailer margins and profitability, Retailers are highly concerned about the heightening levels of violence and the threat of violence associated with theft and crime. 88% of retailers report that shoplifters are somewhat more or much more aggressive and violent compared to one year ago, unquote. Yeah, no duh, you're enabling them. I, again, you don't have to be a retailer or a cultural genius or an expert to realize this, or perhaps you do in the United States, the bar has just dropped that far when it comes to anyone having a modicum of self-respect, dignity, or honor, integrity. 
perhaps, unfortunately, some people might actually have to Google or brave search most of those words because they become so, in some ways, nuts fallen from modern vernacular. But again, when it comes to this issue, yes, it is a huge culture issue. The culture of people being entitled, people thinking they should just steal instead of actually working for a living. I find that disgusting, morally vacuous to say the least. But again, when it comes to retail theft, it can be stopped very easily. All you need is a little bit of approach. One, have your community have a modicum of self-respect. Build a culture of people who know that you're not entitled to anything except an equal opportunity. Work like hell and you will be successful. The odds are in your favor. Now, again, build a culture of self-respect, build a culture that is of accountability and not of crime and theft. Two, talk to the insurance industry. Because right now, and I noticed this when I work in a retail, some of the insurance industries are directing tel directly, again, click the subscribe button, it might fix my stutter. Again, I'm not a Mayo Clinic doctor, but it couldn't hurt. The stuttering has decreased as the survivor count has gone up, so I can't help but think it might have some validity to this theory. Nevertheless, back to my point, in terms of the lawyers and in terms of the actual litigation of the insurance policies, many insurance policies specifically state you cannot stop or even attempt to stop a thief at your store because they've determined with their calculators that there is a higher risk that someone could get hurt if you try to stop them. However, that's both morally vacuous because you're not, you're literally empowering the bad guy to do bad things. And also it's causing this problem to get worse and worse and worse by enabling them. So we need to have a, what is the, as the youth might say, well, more realistically, someone in a retirement home might say, a coming to Jesus moment with insurance industries to talk to them about the long-term profitability of their business model, this business model, as well as injecting a little bit of morality into their business model as well. Because again, long-term target alone is expected to lose $400 million this year. And retail theft, that's one business, one. Again, this is a multi-billion dollar issue as well as a moral and cultural issue that's just driving the country worse and worse and worse. So you need to build the culture at home in terms of the local community. You need to work with these insurance policies and these lawyers. And lastly, you need to actually talk to these stores. Some of these stores are not just enabling this, they're empowering the bad guys. They had an infamous moment where Lulumon which is most famously known for making a highly profitable sheer product for women to wear at the gym and presumably two men. But they actually told their employees to stand down, just let the bad guy get away with it. Two employees had the audacity to try to record a bad guy getting away so they can try to get a license plate. They were fired for doing that. They were fired for doing the right thing. Morally vacuous and disgusting to say the least. It's ridiculous. So you need to have these stores actually prosecute them. And then lastly, you need to vote district attorneys who will actually do their job, which again is a tall order these days as many of them advocate for responsibility and actually do the antithesis of their actual job where they empower bad guys for just letting them walk, letting them plead down to basically nothing in most cases. So again, if you do those four things, you could turn this whole issue around. It's been done before in other countries. Also having some punishment would probably help out as well. Let me know in the comments, do you think Los Angeles, San Francisco, Will they turn their cultures around? Businesses are leaving in droves because of this issue. The only business that's moved to San Francisco in the past 48 months is Ikea, which I joke, or not so depending on, I don't know, it might actually be fact. They just did that because they know that people who steal are too lazy to assemble their own furniture perhaps. Or if they had a twisted sense of humor, they would actually have all the packages so that if you steal it, you only have 50% of the parts and then when they get it home, they try to assemble it. They go, dang it, now I have to go there and buy it. Of course, the joke being they would actually just go there and steal again. They won't actually go there and buy it. But nevertheless, the joke was attempted. So let me know in the comments. Do you think Los Angeles will ever turn this ship around? Will San Francisco or Chicago ever turn this ship around and start to tune up and fix their culture? I hope they do because there are a lot of innocent people who are getting detrimentally hurt in the crossfire. Neighborhoods are being destroyed. Let me know what you think. It'll be fascinating here if you believe these cities can turn their things around. Or do you think it'll just be more of the same? Time shall tell. Thank you again, everyone, for taking the time to tune in today. I know we're trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of October. I know it's mere hours away. However, a wise pilot once told me, never tell me the odds. So if you can click that button, I'd greatly appreciate it. Also, a comment is a great way to let me know how I can make the channel and the show better and better. Lastly, don't forget to take time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone. Just stay safe and fight the good fight.